Welcome to Dust Nostalgia. I'm Anatoly and I invite you to the wonderful world of MS DOS gaming. And today I'm going to take a look at another one of my favorite games of all time Full Throttle. The game was developed and published by LucasArts in 1995 and was the first game helmed by Tim Schaefer in a lead designer role. Schaefer was a co designer of Day of the Tentacle and was responsible for a lot of the dialogue in the first two Monkey Island games. The game starts on a desert road sometime in the not-so-distant future where cars have no wheels and levitate above ground. Here we're introduced to the villain, Adrian Riberger, played by Luke Skywalker himself, Mark Hamill. It's good PR to be seen hobnobbing with real Corley Motors customers. And then, we're introduced to our protagonist, Ben, the leader of the biker gang called the Polecats. Right there you knew that you were in for something special. The game didn't hand you over an average adventure seeker, a bold middle-aged salesman or a space giant to play as. You played the role of a tough biker, and that set it apart right away. The plot quickly thickens as Ben gets set up for murder, and then tries to prove his and his gang's innocence, save a newfound friend, and keep the last motorbike company in the country in business. The story is great and is delivered perfectly. You're always immersed 100% and something is always going on. As in every adventure game there are puzzles to solve, but they're so essential to the story that you barely notice them. The game has some of the most organic puzzles in a story-driven adventure I've ever seen. It feels like you're playing an interactive cartoon. Your every action advances a story and no puzzle feels like it's been tagged on to lengthen the gameplay time. Another thing that sets this game apart is the interface. Up to this point most of the LucasArts games used the verb bar where you would select an action like open and then pick an object that you would like to apply the action to. But this game was most players introduction to what's called the verb coin interface. Here it's designed to represent the Polecats gang logo. All active objects in the game are highlighted, and when you click on one of them and hold the mouse button down, the logo appears and you have a choice of four actions to choose from. The actions are contextual, which means selecting a hand icon could mean to pick an item up or to punch someone in the face. This is greatly demonstrated in the first scene of the game, which serves as a tutorial of sorts to show you not only the interface used, but also the fact that in the world of bikers, violence can often be the right thing to do at the moment. You know what might look better on your nose? What? The bar. <coughs> now don't mess around with me. All right, all right. The graphics are beautiful. The designs are very unique to this game. It's unlike any other LucasArts adventure. Being a CD game, there's plenty of animations in both characters and backgrounds, and cutscenes feature a bunch of pre-rendered 3D objects, uh, mostly vehicles, that fit perfectly with the style of the game. I'm especially fond of the characters themselves that look like they spend most of their lives with their eyes half-closed, and it's used quite effectively as a gag in the game as well. The sound design is perfect, bike engines are loud and powerful, there are plenty of atmospheric sounds that represent the surroundings perfectly, uh, the voices are top-notch, Ben sounds tough, 
dumb henchmen sound dumb and the Mark Hamill's villain sounds unlikable from the first time he opens his mouth. The music is also great. In addition to the usual LucasArts background music, there are also a few tracks by the band The Gun Jackals. In the great LucasArts tradition, the game uses the iMuse system, which gradually switches between music tracks by silencing certain instruments from the current music track and playing cues from the next one to create a smooth transition between the two. But in all prior games, it was done with MIDI music. Here it happens with pre-recorded digital audio for the first time. The game also has a few action sequences as well as a few timed events. Again, keeping with LucasArts tradition, you can't lose in the game and you always get another chance. Some of the fighting with the bikers can be a bit fiddly, but nothing is impossible after a few tries. There is also a top-down car driving arcade sequence, but in reality there is a puzzle for you to solve here as well, so it barely counts as an action bit. What else can I say? The game feels criminally short, but not in the way when you say to yourself, that was it? How much did I pay for this? No, you just want more, that's how good it is. It's also quite easy because of the very organic puzzle design. The goals are very clear and you never carry more than a few inventory items, so guessing is kept to a minimum. I wouldn't call it a short comment at all. The simplicity of the contextual interface combined with a straightforward puzzle design make this game more appealing to beginners rather than concentrating on hardcore adventurers and thus alienating the people who don't have a week to spend figuring out how to make a fake passport photo with pancake syrup and masking tape. The story is engaging and the setup plot works flawlessly, and I just love how you feel that solving every puzzle brings you closer to your goal. A design choice that a lot of adventure games forget about. Nice forks. Where'd you find them? Right next to the knives and spoons. Well, that's it. Well, there isn't much for me to add here. Um, I love this game. It would probably make my personal top 10. Best games of all time list and top five best adventure games of all time list. Um, I mean, when I was a kid, uh, I always welcomed the challenge. I'm like a hardcore adventure gamer, and I grew up mostly with Sierra adventure games, and most of those things were merciless to you and uh, punished you all the time. But I loved solving the puzzle, the puzzles, and everything. But um, I'm also a fan of good storytelling in games, uh, especially big, or, uh, big on uh, organic storytelling. Um, I love when storytelling is... Uh, I mean, I appreciate a good story, as it is. Uh, but in gaming, I like it when good story is integrated with gameplay. And I think when it comes to uh, mid-90s adventure games, no other game did it better than Full Throttle. And if you are interested in retro gaming, which I assume you are because you watched that far, um, and for some unknown reason you're into retro gaming and you have not played Full Throttle, I suggest you go and track down a copy of it right now. Um, probably not very expensive, uh, there's been reissues of it uh, for Windows, and it really doesn't matter which version you buy, um, because it's supported under Scum VM and uh, uh, it takes any data files from any version and uh, you can play it on any platform. I mean, you can play it on the GPS in your car if you want to. So, uh, I don't think I can recommend anything more than Full Throttle. It's a wonderful adventure game and, uh, of course, Tim Schafer is great. Went on to design um, probably one of the final great adventures of all time, Grim Fandango, and as well as um, um, Psychonauts and uh, uh, other good stuff. So, play Full Throttle if you haven't. And if you have, uh, play it again, repeatedly. And this is it for this episode of Dust Nostalgia. I'm Anatoly. Uh, see you next time, and thank you for watching.